Hello architects, this is Locke here. Wanted to show off one of the new features that's been asked about a little bit and try to helpfully explain why it's gonna be such a big deal. So today, I wanna to talk about functions. If you have a programming background, then you're probably gonna have an idea of what this is already. A function is gonna be akin to a script, but you have inputs and outputs to it. Why is that important? Well, you may not want to have to copy things over and over and over again from one place to another. Global script you may have to, if you use something with a global script and hoped that it put things out in the correct order, you would have global values or variables and switches that you would turn on and off and you would assign them from whatever you're calling, which again you can do that, but when you have lots of things calling these and potentially using those same global variables, like say for an adventure battle system, you run the risk of different things happening at different times and variables being used at different points. So it just makes it messy. And not only that, the algorithms for what you're writing could be kind of messy. So let's go ahead and get started and kind of give you an idea of one. So we're gonna start off with something that already has values. No, we're good. I definitely did not do this three times before. I'm gonna go to the next script and try to do that. So maybe on this one, 500 microseconds, it does what it can and then moves here. Functions do not follow that. So from here, we have input variables, switches, and output variables and switches. So for this, the lowest amount you can ever have in a function is gonna be 200 local switches and variables. And the reason for that is variables and switches, zero through 99 are considered input parameters and 100 through 199 are considered your output parameters. So we'll go ahead and open this up. So these two pages will indicate your input parameters and you can name them. So for this, we're gonna go ahead and build a kind of quasi adventure battle system, um, kind of damage algorithm. It'll make sense in a little bit. I'm gonna call this uh, hero, we'll call it uh, user attack, call this user luck, and we will call this target defense and target luck. Okay, so we have four variables now, four input variables with these names. And we're going to have one output variable for, notice it also starts you on the correct page, right? When you click this, it goes to 100 directly. The output will be damage. So we're going to call this ABS damage algorithm. Right? So immediately off the bat, when I call this function, I expect that these four parameters are going to be set on it, right? And the output is going to be this on 100. I need to make sure that I also say that there's one output variable. So in addition to these, I can also resize and make more. These are just truly local variables, so I can do whatever I want with them. So we're going to call this one random chance. Okay. So immediately off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and say change value of my local variable for damage I'm going to set that equal to the local value local variable excuse me of the user attack then we're going to do random chance equals to a random value between 1 and 100 And we are going to say now, we're going to do a condition and say, uh, condition control flow, if this random chance, which is a local variable, if the random chance is less than or equal to our hero, our attacker's luck, then we're gonna go ahead and we are actually going to double the damage. So this is essentially a critical, right? 
So I'm just going to go ahead and multiply by 2. Okay. And now we're going to do something fairly similar. We're going to go ahead and now we're going to subtract from the damage the target's defense. And then we're going to do another random. Whoop. We're going 1 to 100. Assuming, we're assuming that all of our stats are from 1 to 100 on this. And then we're going to say if that random chance that we just didn't generate is less than or equal to luck, we're going to divide the damage by 2. Oop, that's a plus. All right. So what's happening? So we have a function. We're putting in the user's attack. We're generating a random chance between 1 and 100 because we think that the user's luck is somewhere between 1 and 100. If that number that is generated is lower than the user's luck, then we're going to multiply the damage by 2. That's kind of like a critical hit. Then. We're going to go ahead and subtract the target's defense from it. And again, we're going to do this random chance calculation. And same idea as we did for the user's luck. We're going to go ahead and check if it's less than or equal to the target luck, then we divide the damage by two. That's like someone really blocking something or being very strong. Finally, because we want to make sure that our damage isn't below zero, we're going to say if our local variable Oop. We need to specify our local variable. If our damage is less than, so we should just say less than zero. Oop. We're gonna say set our damage equal to the value zero. There's no damage done. So. We've kind of gone through what this all does, and you can see how it works with the local variables. And again, since variable 100 is an output variable, that's going to be what comes out of it. So we'll go ahead and go here. And this is not a true character for an action battle system. This is just kind of a proof of concept. So I can call the function. See, so see here, ABS damage algorithm, and I can provide five and my user's luck can be 50. My target's defense is going to be 2, and their defense is going to be 50. And then I'll set this to function result. So it's saying, again, you can put in the values that you would want, right? So if you have a um, an entity definition with your battler in it, right, or your, your enemy, then you may choose to use some locals that are always set the same exact way, so you can just copy and paste this over and over again really easy. Or you may just hard code values, you know, it's up to you. You may choose for the user's attack and luck, maybe that's something that um, is hard coded in the algorithm because you know it's always going to be the hero's um, values, right? It's, it's truly up to you. So. What we'd expect is about 50% of the time, well, most of the time, it should be just be 5 minus 2, and the damage is 3. But every now and then, it's going to be 5, and it's going to be multiplied by 2, because there's a 50% chance it gets doubled, right? So 10, and that may be minus 2, which is then going to be 8. So sometimes you may see 8 for the damage. And sometimes we may see that um, it's 5, minus two because this doesn't get hit so we don't get the luck doubling it so you have three and then half the time it may cut it in half which would then make it I believe one and then there's obviously one more shot where it could be double to be ten minus two which is eight and then the targets luck kicks in and divides it by two and this all gets copied in this function uh, result right here so the nice thing about this is your values, your global or local, whenever you specify them in here, when it calls the function, it's not going to, um, it's not going to actually 
use the variable and like use it when it's processing it, it's actually going to copy whatever's in the variable or the value into the local variables of the function. Which means that, again, you don't have to worry about collisions. And the nice thing is, too, if you decide you want to change your ABS algorithm, maybe you want it to do the user attack minus the defense, and then you calculate the user luck and then do that, you know, doubling it after and having after you do the base 5 minus 2. That's up to you. You do it in one spot, everything's calling this, so you're fine. You don't have to update it for every single uh, enemy that you have. So you get some really cool options with this. And you can obviously do a lot more than, um, than just you know this. I imagine some people will use this for line of sight, calculating distance between things. And truly, because of how they're abstracted out, if you're just doing algorithms and the like with local variables and switches, it would not be impossible to think that we could literally just have a repository of these somewhere on the internet you copy and paste it, you copy it from that repository as just the text, and then paste it into RPG Architect and you're good to go. You can take someone's algorithm that they wrote. Um, and then one final note on this obviously is that um, scripts generally follow a script timeout. It's set in the system general properties in the database. And functions actually don't follow that. So they will continue, they will run all the way through until they're finished. So. If you have a really intensive function that's going to take a lot of time to calculate and run, there's a chance that that's going to that can slow down your uh, FPS and all that stuff. So just be wary of going super crazy with it. But that said, I've done uh, scripts that have counted to like 10,000 and they haven't really even touched the the frame rate at all. So just be mindful. Anyways, so let's finish this up since I got distracted just like Bert. Now we're just gonna output what the damage is calculated from this, right? So we went over what those could be. Let's run this. Gonna drag this over. There we go. Let's rotate my camera. Here's the character. Damage is one. We expected that. That means that they it was five minus three. And then the enemy, their uh, defense, uh, their luck kicked in and it halved the damage. It was a normal attack, except with um, luck doubling it. Damage is three. Neither luck kicked in at all. Again, same. Uh, same as the first iteration. Damage is eight. Yep, that means the the targets, uh, the the user's attack doubled, and then the enemy's um, uh, luck did not kick in. So you can see how this is useful, right? There are a lot of options. So again, there are a lot of different things you can do with this. Um, and I, I suspect, as I said, that I think that we'll literally have probably some repository somewhere, maybe GitHub, something like that, where people can post snippets of these. You can copy. I'm going to paste this into Notepad. Oop. And you just have this. So you copy, I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to resize this. And just to prove it works. Because I am a madman. Not really. And I'm just going to paste. There you go. It's just magic. Almost. So, I hope that's useful, I hope that helps, uh, and I look forward to seeing what you guys all end up doing with it. Alright, happy architecting!